Like mentioned, Cool will work well with Reflex as Blades and Stealth skills can stack both Bleed and Poison effects for a damage over time Stealth Ninja build. Hey guys, Dantix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video. I've been absolutely drowning in Cyberpunk information lately and it's glorious, however I noticed that so far, from all the sources, none have really provided an easy to understand, in-depth look at how exactly attributes and their corresponding skills and perks work, as well as how it all ties together and the builds you can create. So in this video, I'm going to give you everything we know in terms of character progression in the most exhausting detailed way possible and in the end you're going to know how to build your character even though there's a high chance you still won't be able to choose a playstyle. Before we start letting you know that I gave away a Switch console to a lucky winner and gave away another on Twitter randomly because why not I'm, I'm crazy. So be sure to follow my socials for those kinds of random giveaways. Now I'm giving away multiple copies of Cyberpunk 2077 so to get your hands on one of those follow the link below. Don't forget to join my discord to talk cyberpunk and help this video along with a like and comment as YouTube kind of hates me right now. Okay, so when you start the game, you'll be given a ridiculous amount of customization options. I won't go into the deets here, but you have more than enough to truly make a V that suits your vision. I'm talking 35 hairstyles, three different nipple styles, cyber marks, makeup, 17 different ears, and even colossal long jong slongs uncircumcised the way cyber god intended. Personalizing your V is one thing, but this video is about the juicy stats. So after you're done, you move on over to the starting attributes. There are five attributes total and they affect your character in multiple ways. First, attributes have a passive effect. For example, a high body stat will improve your health based on how high the attribute is. I'll go through passive soon. Next, your attributes affect in-game dialogue checks. You might use your high body stat to, say, attack a person instead of answering. This is similar to how your life path also offers unique choices in conversations. Finally, attributes raise skill level caps. Each attribute has two to three skills associated with them, and each skill has a perk tree. Inside the tree, there are a bunch of perks that you can pick up to improve the character and the skill. You can't go beyond the body perk skill level of 4 if your attribute is 4. You can go up to a 7 if your technical stat is at a 7. This might be a confusing concept for you right now, but I'll go into more details soon. Just note that the template I'm using here is from an old build and is quite different now, but I'll go through that soon. Perks are mostly passive boosts and are purchased with perk points you gain by leveling. Each perk can be found in a skill, which has an aforementioned corresponding perk tree and is tied to an attribute. Complicated, but for example, the body attribute has three skills, one called Street Brawler, one called Athletics, and one called Annihilation. If your body stat is high enough, you can buy a perk within the Athletics tree that lets you force open locked doors like a freaking Hulk. When you use this ability, your athletic skill will gain experience and level up. This will grant bonuses such as an extra perk point or health. Another example, if you use handguns to kill targets, you will gain handgun skill experience. This is nested in the reflex attribute. So to reiterate, your maximum attribute level influences the maximum level of the skills associated with them and leveling these skills up unlocks more powerful perks and rewards the higher you raise it. Though simply having a high attribute won't automatically give you access to the best perks as you'll need to gain experience in the associated skill and level it up. The more powerful perks also need investment in other perks before them in a traditional tree format. Also note that most perks have multiple levels within them that you can purchase with perk points. So the rifle perk called Punisher can be leveled up multiple times for increasing bonuses. Take into account that each tree has around 20 perks each and you have a crazy amount of customization. Moving forward, like mentioned, you start off choosing where to put seven attribute points in the five core attributes. All five start at a minimum of three. So you could start a character with 10 in body and three in the rest, or spread them out as you see fit. This choice is important as this will be the biggest determining factor of how your character plays, at least initially. 
You gain attribute points as you level up, gaining one every second level or so. The exact amount hasn't been discussed yet and could change before release, but just know it'll take a while to bump up another attribute to 10 if you want to retune your build. Since these attributes are important, let's go through what they do for you passively. Body influences raw physical power. It improves your max health and reduces bullet spread. Without discussing the perk trees, improving your body will make you harder to kill, be stronger in melee and shoot more accurately. So naturally this stat lends itself to being a brawler with either a melee focus or using guns that have high spread like fast firing SMGs, machine or shotguns. Reflex influences coordination and speed. It increases critical chance shots and your attack speed. Reflex is the attribute you pick up if you have a particular combat focus you want to rely on and crits or attack speed will improve that. For example, if you want to focus on blades, reflex will increase how fast you swing them and how often you crit. It seems to be a good attribute to sprinkle in. A high body build focusing on melee weapons would appreciate the extra attack speed. Reflex is a great combat focused attribute. Intelligence reduces the hacking difficulty levels and shortens program upload duration. Both of these suit a Netrunner style build. Hacking is something you do up close, either hacking into terminals, doors, people or anything really. There is also quick hacking which is done at range. This isn't as powerful as regular hacking but still lets you do things like pull the pin on enemy's grenades. You pick up intelligence if you want a non-combat related option or the ability to go where you shouldn't or even start fights and end them on your terms. I'll go into more detail soon. Technical ability influences your armor, the chance of harvesting craftable loot and your technical aptitude. Tech is an interesting attribute. It used to influence skill checks that now fit under intelligence. It also used to influence a flathead robot companion, but that has since been scrapped. So those looking forward to that, uh, I'm sorry. It now makes you tankier, impacts everything crafting, and has a mishmash technical effect. For example, some perks improve tech weapon damage, and investing in tech will keep you itemized the whole game to the highest of standards, as well as providing some random bonuses along the way, like being able to hotwire particular cars. Finally, cool influences your self-control, to be cool under pressure. It improves stealth effectiveness and speed, as well as increasing critical hit damage. So obviously, if you want to be all sneaky, you'll need to invest a bit into cool. The nice side effect is you will also do more damage. Combining reflex with cool will create an effective sniper build, for example. Cool also has access to the cold blood skill, wherein if your health drops to a particular point, you'll be granted a berserk state with various buffs determined by the perks you've acquired in the skill. Since the attribute is about being cool under pressure, I think maybe calling it berserk state doesn't work. It's more like a state of heightened senses and focus. After you choose your attribute build and your life path, you'll be thrown into the world to do your thing. As you do particular things though, you'll be granted experience points that count towards your total character level, experience that counts towards the skills you used, and experience that counts towards street cred. Street cred influences what you can buy in stores and how Night City views you. So in this instance, the player uses her mantis blades to decapitate a poor gangoon. You'll notice that it grants the player 251 blade experience, 70 street cred, and 16 level XP. Hopefully seeing this in action will give you a bit of clarity of how the system works, as I'm about to dive into the specific skills you'll have access to. When you have perk points from leveling, you can spend them in 12 trees assigned to the 12 skills. In the body tree, we have Street Brawler, Athletics, and Annihilation. You level up Street Brawler by using melee and it houses your melee based perks. This includes any melee weapon that's not a blade or your fist. The capstone perk in this tree increases your critical chance by 60% for 10 seconds after killing a foe, which I don't need to tell you would drastically increase your DPS. You level up athletics by doing feats of athleticism and it houses perks that help you do things like pry open doors or rip turrets out of their holsters and fire them at their former masters. You can also grab enemies and use them as a shield as well as much more. Generally, the tree also helps you become tankier. The capstone perk increases your armor and resistances by 20% for 10 seconds after being hit. You level up annihilation by using associated weapons and it houses your shotgun and other heavy hitting weapon perks. These are the weapons you use to dismember your foes, and the capstone perk reduces recoil by 50% for 6 seconds after you dismember an enemy, letting you more accurately massacre everyone. 
Moving over to the reflex tree, we have handguns, rifles, and blades. You level up handguns by using small handheld firearms, and it provides perks focused on increasing their effectiveness. The final capstone perk makes it so that if you land a critical hit, you get an armor boost for 20 seconds, making handguns a good defensive option. It may be something you combine with athletics for a passively tanky character with accurate pistols that crit often. You level up rifles by using rifle-based weapons and they provide perks increasing their effectiveness. This now includes sniper rifles, perks before reserved for the cool path. Capstone perk completely nullifies weapon sway and spread for 10 seconds after killing an enemy. Obviously this will be deadly with inaccurate heavy rifles. So cool and reflex based builds will take advantage of stealth and rifles for highly accurate and powerful long range shots. You level up blades by using them in combat, and perks revolve around using bladed weapons, including the Mantis Blade modification. This tree also houses perks that focus around bleeding effects. The capstone lets you deal 15% extra damage with strong attacks by consuming stacked bleeding effects. So no doubt you'll be doing a flurry of light attacks to stack bleeds and finish them with a strong attack. Like mentioned, cool will work well with reflex as blades and stealth skills can stack both bleed and poison effects for a damage over time stealth ninja build. In intelligence, we have device hacking and target hacking. Previously, all perks fell under the single hacking tree. Device hacking has perks related to hacking into devices or things up close and personal, and doing it will level it up. Think fallout hacking and lock picking rolled into one. It will help you non-lethally get through the game and provide other benefits. The capstone perk increases breach time protocols by 25%, so those controlled turrets will fire on their masters for longer. Simple but powerful. Non-lethal players will want some cool and tech splashed in. Target hacking focuses around perks that help you hack targets at range and install demons. Doing so will level up the skill. These demons can detonate grenades, overheat the target and more. Doing so costs cyber deck memory, which is kind of like mana. More powerful quick hack demons will require more memory. There are perks that improve your memory, including the capstone, which increases memory regeneration speed by 25%, making you able to hack enemies in combat more often. In the tech tree, we have crafting and engineering. Previously, it was only engineering. You level up crafting by breaking down, modifying, and creating items. The perks in this tree all relate to increasing the quality or effectiveness of your crafting, and the capstone in this tree increases sale price of crafted items by 25%. Most RPGs break the crafting side of things down to their own categories. Cyberpunk makes it easy. Every build will benefit from this. Engineering relates to tech-related tasks and weapons, and levels up by using both. It's unclear exactly what tasks you'll be able to do at release, as it's changed quite a bit throughout development, but it used to be hot wiring, fixing, and making things in the world. Tech weapons are powerful, and you'll no doubt get access to the best ones via crafting. The final capstone increases your tech weapon damage by a flat 25%. Very powerful. In the cool tree, we have stealth and cold blood. This has changed from the assassination, nerve, and sniper rifle skills that we had in the last build, with sniper rifles combining in the rifle tree and assassination and nerve having their names changed. The stealth skill is leveled up by stealthing around and houses perks related to doing so as well as the application of poisons. The capstone skill increases poison duration by 5 seconds. These perks are for those wanting to sneak around, do silent takedowns, get massive damage bonuses for killing while unseen, or going the non-lethal route. Stealth helps a lot of builds that don't want to Rambo. Cold Blood is leveled up by being in the Cold Blood state. It houses perks that buff this state. It's activated in various ways, but the normal way is dropping below a certain percentage of health. When you do, you'll get buffs based on the perks you invested in. The capstone increasing your crit chance by 10% and crit damage by 2% while it's active. This boost will be beneficial to builds that focus on combat and don't have a guerrilla style hit and run tactic. So those not wanting to stealth will still have reason to be cool. So hopefully after that breakdown you have a better idea of what you want to invest your attribute points in and how you want to build your character. This is not even touching on body modifications which will also drastically influence your playstyle. Let me know below if it all makes sense and what kind of build you'll be looking to run. My mind is racing with potential builds but personally I think I'll run a sneaky hitman focused on pistols, stealth and maybe a bit of hacking. Thanks for watching guys, the hype is real and not slowing down anytime soon. 
For everything RPG and Cyberpunk 2077, keep your eyes on Slash Dantix, or better yet, hit that bell and you'll be notified when I next upload some more juicy info. Catch you later, friends.